All right, everybody. Welcome to the Roll Forge. This is the first podcast that we're uh, coming to you guys with. It's uh, Jameson here, and I got a couple other guys here. Let them introduce themselves. Go ahead, Alex. Oh, as he said, I, I'm Alex. I'm the other guy. If you uh, watch our YouTube channel on, on Urge TV, uh, it would be me and Jameson here today, and we brought along our uh, our tertiary companion, who's have made multiple appearances on the show as well. Total of two. It's Caleb. What's up, everybody? Hey, yo. All right, so this is, again, the first episode, so it might be a little rough around the edges as we kind of figure out how we're going to go about doing this stuff. Um, we're looking at possibly doing a video podcast down the line, but for now, we're just doing just audio. Uh, so we'll just get right into it, I guess. So uh, obviously, the, one of the main things we talk about on the channel is Dungeons & Dragons. So I uh, figured we'd just start off with some of that for everybody, but we'll be talking about D&D, uh, gaming, you know, everything nerdy and movies and uh, TV board and game everything. And there you things. go. Tabletop. Exactly. So if it's nerddom, we'll talk about it. There you go. We got it. So uh, D&D. We have, of course, our uh, our own playgroup. And in this playgroup, I am the DM, and we have Alex playing a. Well, I'll, 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 why don't you guys uh, just explain what what your characters are and what you guys what what it's yeah. all about? Okay. Um. Well, I play a blue dragonborn tempest cleric, and yeah, that's a mouthful to say, but kind of makes sense thematic wise. Tempest cleric specialized. Full garum. Yeah, full garum steel scale. Uh, specialize in uh, you know lightning and thunder damage based magic. Their you know their abilities help buff the damage that they get to do with that. Uh, you know blue dragonborn can breathe lightning, so it kind of made sense thematically wise. And I'm I'm usually not the kind of player who enjoys just min maxing for the sake of trying to be the absolute best thing out there. I want to play something that I enjoy playing, no matter what game I'm playing, whether it's whether it's D&D or World of Warcraft or Borderlands or the things that I play, I usually like to find something I enjoy playing and focus on that. And that's how I ended up with a Blue Dragonborn Cleric instead of a uh, a race that may be more suited for it. But I really enjoyed enjoyed the balance of being able to heal people when is needed, uh, but being able to wreck some face with lots of lightning and thunder damage when needed as well. I don't think you've ever healed me before. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen you heal anyone before. <laughs> it's normally, it's normally call lightning. <laughs> uh, spiritual weapon. Call lightning again. <laughs> well, if you and get in there and replace action, them, I have to heal you. healing word you or yeah. mass cure wounds, I'm going to move my spiritual weapon. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Swing yep. with it. <laughs> Go ahead there, Caleb. Anyway, no, I, okay. Um, I play a College of Swords bard. His name is Nathaniel Hugh Johnson the uh, Third. He's a noble. He's a uh, kind of a. He's an outgoing guy. Um, he's fair, you know. He's he uh, likes to likes to put on a good show. Like any, I guess that's that's kind of cliche for a bard, but um, big on appearance. Um, I picked College of Swords more or less because I wanted the full caster part of it because it's the first like full caster and only full caster I've ever played. The only only other thing I've really like, yeah, dabbled and got into was a barbarian. So that was like, you know, kind of just lay face on dice and do damage. But uh, I wanted I wanted a little bit more of the full full-on combat so and i picked the bard because i you know like any i think uh somewhat true D D fan watched critical role uh, and scanlan short halt was a big inspiration to uh, to my bard so like every time i listen or watch critical role i'm always like man scanlan always looks like he's having you know the best time so i wanted to have a good time and I picked College of Swords because I also wanted to be able to, if I needed to, get in there with the rapier and start, you know, poking on stuff. But uh, other than that, I chill back and I throw bark inspirations and ditties and, and, and play my, my harp. And, yeah, it's a good time. Um, 
Yeah. It, we, we, we could talk about. We we could talk it, about. Really, I want to talk about the. Not not the last session we just had, but the session. The before one before. That. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, was... It was. It's probably one of the most unique. <laughs> One of the most unique encounters that yeah. I think. I spent a lot of time on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've seen for sure, and maybe that Alex and, and you know Jameson came up with it. So, yeah. So well, I'll I'll give a little bit extra uh, background too. Is we actually have um, two other people in our campaign. Well, this is actually like our main campaign. We've been. I think it's been. Oh man, I think it's going on how long have we been playing this campaign alex like a year and a half two years now it's been a while on and off probably close to two uh, years but we, I feel like we started it in the summer so we went through like a couple that. of breaks or we we because we've rotated players in and out because me and drew are still the only original players we still have in this campaign yeah we rotated a few people out here and there had some people jump in for one or two uh you know campaign or uh i don't want to say campaigns shots. it's not really a one shot it's not a campaign one it's like a, a couple sessions i'll say that um okay. in and out for maybe a few sessions but so we've kind of rotated a few um people in and out over time kayla's the newest person into the session uh yeah, I just bringing started the playing, bar. Like, i just started playing playing D D straight up last year uh talked about it uh all before that but i was away living i was i was i wasn't living uh in the same place as these guys or when they were doing that and i know that doesn't inhibit me from playing but i really didn't uh it's easier when you first start off to be in person for be sure person. because yeah, you yeah. can explain it and help That's show I need people. To hold my hand, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put together in character, so I need to hold my hand. <laughs> and when I came back and like sat down for my first one, we weren't even like like you said. Well, I, I'm the newest one to this main campaign that's been going on for a while, but I feel like I've been there the whole time. But uh, we sat down and did what three or four. Maybe five water deep runs. Yeah, we had a few sessions in that, uh, yeah. and a couple one shots here and there. At, well, between. No, oh, yeah, well, yeah, and then Alex, I did Alex's one shot. It was good. That was yeah, fun. so. And that's where Nathaniel started. That's where that bard. That's, yep. I made the bard for the one shot. And just adapted and, him for for yeah, the and just to move loved over. It yeah. so much that I was like, all right, if if I'm moving over to this one, I'm bringing this character with me, and I just scaled him down, and yeah, it worked out. So. so so yeah like the rest of the party we have uh, so you have your your bard you have your cleric and then we have uh i think drew is an assassin rogue and yeah. um jacob is circle the moon druid i believe so yeah. that's the party right there it's an interesting composition very uh caster heavy in fact the rogue is the only one who can't cast something yeah <laughs> so it's, it's kind of interesting cool casters in one martial class so and another thing too is in the campaigns like that that we've been doing that I've been running with this one is I, I think it's interesting to have lots of magic items because it just adds more it makes you feel more uh, powerful as a character I feel like yeah I um, got one my first I got one my yeah. first session on it dude I got yeah. the, heart, the first session it was uh, felt it felt really good it's the first time I ever got like a piece of loot actually yeah and, and you I like to write and, stuff like and, on a yeah. note card and then I'll hand them the note card you know so like. That you, tangible feel. That's yeah, tangible. Like yeah, that it. tangible feel feels good. Um, and I almost, I almost lost it before we sat down and played <laughs> the last time. I'm freaked out. I was like, he's gonna kill me, and then I'm not. He's gonna have to come up with something oh, like, man. oh, it, 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 it got lost somehow. And whenever we talk about what happened or what happened this session, that we were like, oh, it's incredible. It'd be a good. If we'll say yeah. it fell off the boat, <laughs> but yeah, I yeah up, exactly. I ended, up, I ended up, I ended up finding it, so it worked out, but. So Caleb was bringing up uh, not this last session that we just did, but the session before that. Um, I, I gotta give a little bit of background here. So uh, essentially, like in this campaign, everyone's level eight right now. Um, it started off as XP uh, leveling system, but then over time, I find it a lot easier to just switch over to milestone, um, just because it keeps everyone in the same uh, level, obviously, and also it makes the encounters easier to to balance for me. Because when you have people that are all over in different levels, it can it's and especially when you throw in a lot of magic items into the mix, it can be really complicated in uh, how to balance encounters. And also, um, we do fewer encounters per day. We do maybe one or two, so I have to really buff up a lot of stuff too. Because you know, with your typical six to eight encounters uh, a day, you're not getting that uh, per se. Um, and they're like also talk, very like conservative. They're also very <laughs> conservative with their spell usage. So I have to really 
like, almost kill them for them to use their spell slots, it feels like, sometimes. They're like, oh, I'm almost dead. How much health do you have for? Uh, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, no uh... pots. Like, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, besides that... I'll healing word him for four next turn, just get him up, and then yeah. you're still standing next to the mob, and it's like, oh, roll to hit. Yeah. 28! <laughs> well, that'll hit. <laughs> you're dead, Got him. Hit. Yeah. But, uh, so... Uh, in the story arc that we're doing right now, uh, Fulgarum, which is Alex's character, um, he had a, a buddy who was shipwrecked from, because he's from an island, uh, out in the sea. This is our, we, we have our own world setting as well, uh, that it's in, that I've created. Oh, bro, bro, bro. And, uh, so they're on a voyage to, uh, go see what's going on with his homeland, because there's been, like, reports of attacks and all kinds of strange things, plant life dying and fish you know disappearing and stuff like this so they're on a voyage to go see that and uh right before they left they had like a festival because they saved the this uh port city from this evil queen basically and they had like a, fe a festival and they had like a sparring match with some royal guards who are like eight and nine cr uh but they had full spell slots and everything for the day and all their magic items and they just like made a work of these two characters and i'm thinking to myself good lord they're supposed to only be able to fight one of these. I know it's only like they, they used a couple Max spell slots because for for uh for um the festival I had like mini games and stuff, so they used a few spell slots here and there. Uh but they're pretty much like it was like turn one, all level five spells, like go. Or level four spells. Level level, spells. Level, sorry, sorry, yeah. level eight, sorry. I, I I'm thinking because you're almost level nine, I'm thinking ahead already. <laughs> uh right. but um so anyway. So I was like, I need to make a, a, an encounter that's going to be a little bit more interesting. And I'd actually been planning this encounter for a long time. It's just been on the back burner since we started a, a, some side campaigns and some one-shots here and there. But essentially, I put them at sea in a big, uh, sea, uh, big storm, like a big tempest in the middle of sea. And they had uh, the captain warned them was like uh, before the uh, storm was coming that they needed to help tie down stuff in the in the hull, get everything ready and you know safe. As best they could, quote unquote, uh, and so I had them roll uh, saving throws for multiple different things that they were tying down, like kitchen equipment, uh, armory caches, you know, all kinds of different items, and they all had different types of saves and different uh, DCs on them. And I didn't tell them if they saved or not. I was just like, okay, okay. Um, and I think there was like nine or twelve different saves, and I think they failed all but three of them or something like that. Uh, so there was, was but they didn't know this ahead of time, right? So. Um, and I set up this encounter that I literally planned out every single uh, round of combat where something would happen. So it would be like, uh, encounter start, there's, um, well, first of all, I, I broke it into uh, four sections, right? So you started in the hull, and from the hull, what, uh, per round, they could only move from one area to, to another area. They couldn't move more than one area. So it started in the hull, and they can move from the hull to the main deck, and from the main deck, they can move to the quarter deck or uh, to the bow. Not on that same turn. Like it had yeah, to be like, like all you like, could do was go to the main deck or stay. Yeah, once you got once you moved turn. to a new area, you couldn't move to another area uh, that turn. So and then it, uh, from the main deck, they can move to either the quarter deck or the bow. And from the bow, they could only move back to the main deck. And from the quarter deck, they could only move back to the main deck. So they had to kind of choose a, a head. You had to like strategize like where to be and when and how to split up the party and stuff. And then um, I'd say like on round two. Uh, a sail gets struck by lightning and it starts whipping about and then I'd make like um, melee attacks or ranged attacks depending on what broke or whatever. If like a piece of the rail broke off, it'd be like a ranged attack against them or a, like a deck saving throw or something. Um, and it would be stuff happening like every single round and then every like five or six rounds, there'd be a big wave that would come that would just deal massive damage uh, to everybody. And also the, the things that they failed their checks on down below would start breaking free and sliding around the cabin and they'd have to try to uh, fix those and one of those things broke free and it knocked out uh, one of the crew members so they had to save the crew member and it was this whole thing going about and there was like four or five rounds down below where people were trying to catch objects flying around and it would just it, it turned into this crazy mess but I thought it was hilarious I had three health <laughs> at the end of it like when it was like over like I had three health left it was, I mean, it was amazing, and I was just—I mean, I almost died to, to like a non, to a boat, you know, like, like a boat, like a non-living, 
uh, inanimate object of a combat. Almost died. It was nuts. I don't know if that says a lot about. I don't know if that <laughs> says a lot about your ability to create cool uh, combats and encounters, or my lack of being able to <laughs> being able to roll well to not die to a boat. <laughs> but I really blame it. I blame it on uh, who was supposed to tie down the kitchen supplies again because it was. Is it? Was it you Jacob? missed that save. Was that Jacob? I think it might have been Jacob. I'm pretty sure it was Jacob. I think I rolled the highest on those. Like none of the was it the like the weapons. None of those. Yeah, came none of them. Those were the biggest. Like, those ones would have hurt the my, most. Yeah, and I was the one that rolled on those, and they were like, it was like 19 and 18, and I was like, yeah, those niggas are secure. <laughs> but uh, I, I think it was really interesting for the the for you guys because it wasn't just a straightforward fight. You know, like you see a bad guy, and you just hit him until he stops moving. But in a storm, uh, you can't really kill a storm. Now you did do some stuff with um that I gave you some. Uh, extra control options water. where like you use control water and control weather and stuff and I'd give you advantage like advantages or bonuses or uh, reduced DCs and stuff like that which was interesting use of stuff but you couldn't just straight up uh, kill the storm right like it, it was just a really interesting because you can just burn all your spells and kill something in the first round uh, a lot of times especially when you get higher level and if you roll really well on initiative uh, and the creatures don't have legendary actions or uh, resistances. It can just be a total slaughter. They're like you plan out this big old boss fight, and they just die in the first round. You're like, oh, whoops. Yeah, we were at the mercy <laughs> of dice rolls and like you. <laughs> that was it. There wasn't like there wasn't any kind of cleverness to it. <laughs> Even though we did try and be clever with with. Uh, Trolling water and yeah no I def definitely gave got bonuses water. and stuff for that and I the, the other thing too I didn't mention is how the combat ended I had it uh, worked out so that it was X number of rounds minimum and then also uh, once they fixed everything that was broken like a hole broke in the in the front of the ship and they had to like repair it while water was gushing in and like uh, the the captain got knocked over and a, a piece of debris like stuck into the the helm so he couldn't steer the ship and they had to fix that and then like the sail got ripped and they had to repair it so it was like once they fixed everything in the ship and a certain number of rounds had passed, then it was like they'd made it through the hardest part of the storm kind of thing, and that's when the encounter ended. And I think, I know Otto got, or Jacob's character got knocked out uh, once or twice, because I was like, um, you gotta make a dex 30 saving throw, and he's like, um, Otto's floating around the cabin. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah, the, yeah, in yeah. the water or whatever. And, he, and y'all, he's a, he's a, he's a, a, a rock, rock gnome, gnome right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Imagine a rock gnome, like... <laughs> Floating around in a sinking ship, like dead. <laughs> Play it off great. I, I mean, he's not here to defend himself. So I'm going to give him a lot of credit because he plays his character extremely well in the fact that he's like, okay, what is that? Like, he sees a fish, doesn't know what that is. And he's he lives in like hills and caves, kind of thing. His character, so he did a good job of like not knowing what's going on, being on a boat. Like, yeah, like, he like goes to you and says. He, like after you go and it's like dive down like you just went out to like went for a swim like whatever yeah. and he came back up and he was like say for garum you teach me how to swim sometime you know like great yeah. great stuff that low yeah. key that low key really good touch on on, on the feeling RP out uh, yeah. the rp and and right and you know race of your character and stuff and like where he's from <laughs> like when, I, when the first night i sat down i was you know, Otto, where are you from? Like, his character's name is Otto. I was like, where are you from? Oh, I come from a hill. A hill? Like, yeah, yeah top of a hill. Uh, <laughs> all my family's from the top of the hill. And then I said, oh, like, oh, yeah? He's, yeah, we just moved from hill to hill. And that was it, you know, like, being no, on a mountain. He, I remember he's like, he's like, he like, do you ever move? And he's like, oh, eventually, like, the hill decays down into, like, a flat surface. And then we just move to the next hill. Move to the next hill, that's <laughs> right. Like, the, eventually the mountain or the hill erodes away and, and weather, weathers itself away. And they just move to the next mountain. And that's all I got out of him. And I was just like, okay, okay, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I love I love when you guys like and the other thing too is the two the two guys that aren't here of course are the two guys that are like the trolliest. So like they yep. always like to pick on uh on Alex's character on the Dragonborn. So like pick uh, on the biggest guy here, right? <laughs> Otto, he built a saddle. He built a saddle so he could ride around on on uh, Fulgarum on the Dragonborn as a rock gnome. So 
you know, and then uh, Zildu the Rogue, you know, Drew, he always sneaks around and, like, with uh, Caleb's character, he went and bought, like, a fancy hat, right? And he got, like, this this red feather and... Like a really, really over-the-top, big feathered hat, you know. So, and... of course, Zildu uh, the Rogue <laughs> sneaks in, uh, he's watching him the whole time, and then he goes into the store after him and gets a, a black feather... And then he sneaks up in sleight of hand, switches up the feathers. You know, it's like he just he just messes with people all the time, and it, said, it can lead to some interesting moments. I, I got like a I picked out a maroon colored feather, and he switched it for the black one. And the the, the reason behind him getting a, me getting a black one was that it was more stealthy. It was it was, <laughs> yeah, it, was right. it would be better in the stealthier situations. And I'm just like, come on. And then I'm trying to woo the 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 elf the elf maid <laughs> yeah. on the crew of of the ship that we were on, <laughs> like I go up to meet her at the at the top of the deck or at the the bow of the ship, and and Drew's character like I give him a wink as I go up the stairs to like follow her up there, and he points at my hat or points at like a you know a hat on the top of his head, and he goes black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like motion for me to, to switch out to put the black feather on and i was just oh man i'm pressing the digitation of my maroon feather to 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 flutter in the wind yeah. there was no wind i was under deck but yeah so good little stuff like that yeah it's great um oh, one other thing that i'd like i know you i know you want to talk about it caleb is caleb's been working on uh He's got a really interesting job where he can just do whatever he wants. Not really, but <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. I mean, uh, so yeah, I get, he's been I get working. Stuff done and then I've got downtime. So, so all right, uh, give him, let explain some of the stuff you've been working on here recently. Um, Alex actually kind of like seeded this where, well, really, whenever we've been playing, we've been sharing his, and he made a dice box tray like like a dice rolling tray and it's beautiful um love well, it thank you, man i appreciate that felted <laughs> or it's you know it's felt lined and and uh really rustic it's got you know like bark truly really like all natural looking wood varnish really well and then we're kind of rolling the same thing and i'm kind of like i want my own so I like to think that I'm pretty good with my hands and stuff and, and am crafty and, uh, have seen all the cool stuff from, from Wormwood and, and Critical Role and all their really, really elegant, uh, boxes and dice towers and stuff. So I went, started looking at some videos, uh, just kind of DIY dice towers. And I had already had an idea in my head of like how I thought I could get it, you know, do it and everything. I got a bunch of scrap wood laying around at my shop at my work and had some downtime on on tuesday and went at it and kind of spur of the moment uh sat down and started cutting wood and gluing it together and i mean y'all were talking like we're talking quarter inch plywood it's it was it was birch it's pressed plywood it's um like low tier wood quality stuff but i just wanted to get a rough cut of like what pieces i would need and how easy it would be to put together and just kind of how time consuming and even if i could do it and sure enough two hours later uh i walk away with a functioning but i didn't know it was functioning yet i didn't have my dice with me so it was really i was really the whole time like when i was getting ready to leave and kind of driving home i was like now, I, I was pretty positive that if I threw a dice down the little slot that I made that it was, you know, that it would come out the bottom and be randomized because <laughs> it's got little kickers inside of it that randomize them. And uh, I was pretty positive that would happen, but didn't test it. So I got home as soon as I walked in the door, you know, set it down, opened it up, stood it up and grabbed my dice and started rolling down it and it worked. And then also we had talked about like when we were going to play this week and hadn't really said anything in uh, concrete yet. And turns out we ended up playing that night and i got to kind of debut it uh on tuesday and or for that session and played with it and uh it was awesome and it worked and it was functional it's great well as any good craftsman i think you look at your first 
a shot at it and you go, well, how do I make this better and how do I make it easier and yeah, how do I basically how do I make this better? I did a little bit more looking around on the next day, Wednesday, and like found some other different like shades of wood, basically shades of wood, different types of wood, and went at it and tried to make it a little bit better, a little bit more like uh, seamless and because I had to I had to fix a lot of imperfections on the first one made it a whole lot more square i basically went at it the second time and went all right you're gonna do it better this time and it did it turned out way turned out way better loved it it looked uh more complex it it was uh neater um way more streamlined and then um then i was like all right how can i make it better again and i I it was still the plywood thing actually went and got some decent hardwood solid pieces of maple and oak and uh, took a whole lot more time today i had a I had like a lot more downtime today I, uh, <laughs> had a lot more downtime today <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> went at it and took my time a little bit more on this third shot at it and i'm kind of obsessing right now um <laughs> because i went i went day one and i was like all right yeah let's try it it's cool day two all right you're gonna make it better you're gonna make another one and then while i was making the second one i was sitting there going all right so the next one that you do tomorrow you're gonna do it like <laughs> this instead of like that you know so it's just gonna i think it's gonna be an ongoing thing but uh really really proud of how this one turned out it still needs a little bit more work but uh basically all that goes into um, I want to start, I, I guess, and the more I researched this and like looked up, you know, different styles, uh, different, yeah, basically different styles, different ways to go about it, different D, uh, DIYs and everything. The more I saw that like everybody and their sister has got a Kickstarter or an Etsy account that's making, you know, like woodcrafting stuff, because I think it's really awesome carpentry and like woodworking stuff. I've, I've always had like a little knack for it ever since I was a kid and really enjoyed doing it and you know like i just said i'm I'm kind of been foaming at the mouth obsessing over it while i'm in the process of doing it uh for those it took me it was close to four hours today and i was just yeah i was like the whole time i barely i wasn't talking to anybody I, i'm basically down in my little dungeon of a shop it's not a full-on wood shop y'all i'm doing this all with a skill saw <laughs> and a, we're, and getting a there, we're getting saw. there we're getting there skill saw a, a square and a uh, tape measure and a bunch of grits of sandpaper and a, and a power sander and yeah it's uh it, it's awesome and i'm sitting here going like how am i gonna make this better it's like right in front it, of me on my desk and i'm looking at it and i'm going like all right it, it, it I, i'm gonna it, it's totally still not right just yet but like tomorrow it, when it, I'm next <laughs> next draft next the thing is like we're not even a week in and, and you've already got like three versions yeah, of it, man. Right it's, and it yeah. looks good. Like the last, I haven't even seen the newest one yet, but uh, the last one. And the thing too, I don't know if you get if you guys understand like how it works. It's it, it's like it like fits inside. It's like a dice tower with a little tray, right? But like it it like fits inside into like a rectangle, and yep. it's like a little shoe box almost. And like you pull, it, like it has little slots for your fingers to pull it out and slide it out, and then you like stand it up and set it inside. So like. It, it can also it, it, it's i think it's got like an ornamental value like a really desk you know like a yeah desk it piece looks kind pretty of, sharp not gonna lie kind of look to it and you wouldn't even know what it is like if when you have it all like folded and closed up mm-hmm. like it just looks like a box right like, like a little wooden jewelry box and we yeah the first the first on the first go when i showed it to you jameson you were like well have you seen all the wormwood stuff and I, I i really didn't i knew that wormwood made them and i knew that it was top of the line I looked at their dice rolling boxes, which were yeah. just the felted boxes that were made from what? Uh, African zebra wood, you know. Yeah, they got stuff. all kinds of fancy stuff, the purple it's heart. The and stuff. Yeah. Wood. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, all right, so it's all so, so nice and eloquent and all that. And uh, then you showed me that video of, like, basically, it was on their Kickstarter or whatever, where it all is the, what are they called? Rare earth magnets, where they, yep, yep. They totally break down and collapse. And they mm-hmm. still end up. They still end up, like, all right, this is me. This is stowing my bit out there. Like, I think it it's because it's going to be a bigger tower, that the whole, like, why they do the magnet bit, because it's yeah, a way bigger tower. It's way bigger than what my, like, mine are, y'all are, like, when it stood yeah. up, 
when it stood up all the way, it stands seven and a half inches tall from, like, from the drop point. And then when you lay it down, obviously, it's, or, when you lay it down inside of it, it's two and a half inches tall and seven inches long and four inches wide. So it's, uh, it's really, really compact. That's what I think that I like most. It's, it's kind of, it's a little bit sleeker. And because I don't really think you need, I mean, unless you're talking big table, you're at like a, I don't know, like a, like a dragon's horde kind of game center where you've got a, a, a huge party that you're playing with, or you're really going to like, I don't, I don't know, or you've got something more like permanent. You go for that more big elaborate thing. I'm talking this one set up and, and, and put down in a way it's, it's taken up barely like a, you know, a corner of, of your table. You can still have all of your your character sheets, your your notes and all that right in front of you, and then it just kind of sits right there to the side and not really take up that much room. And so that was kind of what I'm going what I was going for. But like as far as talking about the wormwood thing, it gets taller. It d totally breaks down to be a little bit bigger than the ones I, that I'm actually, making. I'm pulling I'm folding up right now while you were talking. It the, the dimensions for the wormwood ones, the the personal ones, not not the tabletop ones are uh eight eight point one by four point one by two point two five so it's actually pretty similar in size okay so that's right i didn't know that they had personal versus like, yeah they have top. yeah i'm so thinking... like with that one it's actually really similar in size and uh i actually like that yours like go it's like two pieces right you don't have to assemble it it's every just time two pieces yeah so it's, i it's do more like that that way yeah it's more like it's 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 less it's it's two pieces so it's not you don't have to like say you I don't know. You don't have to keep up with with as with yeah, that as much. Yeah, like you're not going to lose a piece. That definitely makes it more. It's more rigid. Like it's it's two pieces and that's it. Like the the whole like tower aspect of it. Like the thing about wormwoods is if you've ever seen them, you know the the, the tumblers on the inside are even they even come apart and it all like yeah, flattens yeah. out. Like minor minor glued in there. People like they're it's, not. It's two it's two solid pieces and like the other piece fits inside the other one. So I yeah. I do like that. It's like that. I think it's going to be cool, and maybe eventually we could, you know, maybe uh, do a promotion we'll get, for that at some point for you guys. Yeah, I definitely want to like. If you get guys some, are interested in that kind of stuff, um, get the word out and handmade, you know. But yeah, uh, get, getting word out and then um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, just getting better, like not better, like more drafts uh, in, more more, more uh, practice in, more and like schematics. It. Because I'm going to, I mean, you, you could, they're all, they're, they're all functional. <laughs> and then like, you know, you get, I, I get some actual, like, I don't know, pictures and some evidence. Like there's one thing talking about it, like sitting there going like, oh, and you guys are probably picturing this like crudely, I mean, the, cr <laughs> the crudest, you know, like go at, at woodworking. But I mean, I, th I, I'm pretty proud of it. And like, that also doesn't, doesn't enforce me trying to advertise it yet. But uh, yeah, some actual like picture proof. Of the quality would be uh yeah yeah for sure would be essential to try and like actually get something going but y'all might have found a little bit of a side hustle a, a side hustle <laughs> calling uh fun um i love it my, hey, you my, guys will be the first to know about it i'll tell you that yeah bet. when we start uh, selling them you know that uh you know get some we, we even talked like we were first night it was like all right we got to get a uh, a brand now uh like a, or at least like an etching of of a roll forge logo yeah yeah on this sucker on it or at least like maybe 10 or so down the way just go like all right i'm gonna make a roll forge one and do it totally themed like roll forge even y'all i'm thinking dude i just got like crazy ideas actually making <laughs> it like like cut out like a cat like i would actually carve you know brick or or, or yeah like a brick or, or stone kind of work in the side man Ooh, and go like a great gray stain to it or find a Oh, there's real all good. kinds of stuff. Soft gray wood. Yeah, man. That's what's up. Um, so. Yeah, I just, I'm just, I just want to see where this is going to go. Because I saw the first couple drafts and I was actually surprised. I had no idea that Kayla, that he could, that he could make that kind of stuff. And I was like, what? But, uh, myself. and they get, they get better every time, man. So, uh, but I don't want to, I don't want to have the first podcast get, we'll get too long on here. So let's just do, uh. One last little thing here we'll just discuss for a couple minutes, and then uh, we'll wrap it up for the first episode here as we kind of 
uh, work out some of the technical we stuff and, and all that stuff. Yeah, we could talk for hours, <laughs> and we'll we'll keep it short uh, for the first few till we get kind of get like our bearings on everything and figure out the technical side of how we want to uh, handle the sound and the uploading and all that fun stuff. Um, but I think uh, one thing I think could be a little interesting. Uh, what are some games and stuff that you guys are playing right now, or some games and things that you're like looking forward to coming out here uh, soonish? Anything on your plate? Alex, you I'm go. Sure I've talked. I, I talked for like. The rest of the time, so. What now? Is if I get going on this topic, I'm going to take you the. Got, rest all right, just one. That's fine. Right. Hey, we all had our just big set. We had our, we had our big sections. Alex hasn't yeah. talked too much you're, yet. You're go for it. Us out. You're closing us out, what, bro. What What is Alex playing right now? What is he looking forward to? Go. Well. As we, <laughs> as we are currently speaking, I'm doing some light World of Warcraft work. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> doing the doing the dailies of the new 8.2 uh, patch in Azatar and Mechagon, getting that stuff done. I gotta have my reps because I'm a completionist when it comes to games. My dad kind of drilled that into me. The lore master, <laughs> as I do have the lore Jeez. master title, and I've had it for a while now, actually. Um, but that's beside the point. Um. I, I've, I've, mounts. <laughs> I've, I've yeah. got 230 toward the achievement looking for the mount collector mounts he's not asmogold people but he's he's the local asmogold yeah, I, I don't, I don't get the asmogold next game, door so i can't be asmogold, sorry. <laughs> yeah. um but besides that i i'm a big fan of the new smash uh, smash game uh, smash bros that is franchise there's probably no game franchise i have put more hours of my time into It'd be close between World of Warcraft and Smash Bros. Because ever since the one came out on the 64, I have bought every every single one and continue to love the games. Um, that's most of my time lately has been playing those two things. But as far as the t- the biggest thing I'm looking forward to coming out this year is definitely Borderlands 3. I've uh, talked to some different people uh, about, you know, they think that you know, the, the franchise has run its course. Well, they they haven't shown a whole lot about the game yet. You know, there there's some mixed, I think some maybe uh, cautious optimism might be the best way to describe the overall. Cautiously thing. optimistic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love might that. be how the, the overall bundling of the people I've talked to who have played the franchise, both from like people who work at you know game stores and other friends of mine that have played the franchise. But I am beyond stoked and beyond hopeful that it's going to be just as good as the second one and hopefully better than the pre-sequel. The pre-sequel wasn't bad. I like the pre-sequel, but it's not as good as two. So that's that's the definitely the biggest thing I'm looking forward to, which is really not that far away because it's like September 13th, so like two months from today yeah. almost <laughs> when, when, it, when it's out. And uh, I know that myself and uh, Caleb and it. a couple other guys are looking forward to WoW Classic. Booyah. Ooh. They, Will come out um, it's a little before, little before that. We think we, we think we're we think we're ready for it. But we think we're ready. <laughs> James, 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 the first, I'm gonna James I'm gonna play it. All, yeah, James is the only one out of all of us that actually played vanilla. Alex and I started like late right BC. mid BC, right mid BC, and uh, I think and, when we go back, we're gonna be like, this is gonna be so awesome, and then like we're gonna get our first quest and be like, wait, where where do we have to go? Like, what See, do we have I'll to do? What do we kill? You to, You'll right, spend so 20 minutes the, killing the wrong mob and then realize I, that. <laughs> if, you, if, you're really, if you're really trying to do it, you know. Oh, uh, if you're really trying to do it all. Hello? Yeah. Dang. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm sitting on my computer. Uh, if you're really trying to, like, do it right, you're watching all these, watching all the YouTube videos, you know, kind of prepping, like, which class do you pick? Which class do you roll? Uh, what are the big, you know, 10 biggest differences between Vanilla WoW and Retail WoW? Blah, 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 blah. You're watching all that stuff. And... I was on for the stress test, and I'd already knew that this was going to be a thing, but I went to, I, I made a human randomly, like whatever, made a human, and went to, you know, you start in Northshire Abbey, just to like see, this is like see and feel it, you know, maybe like, oh, have a little nostalgia, because my first character was a human in BC, uh, a paladin, um, uh, Salmonos, uh, anyway, you know, it does the Jeez. whole, it does the whole pan through Elwyn Forest, and the, the, voiceover and then you get to the abbey and you go to Northshire abbey y'all there aren't or there, there are no exclamation marks on the map you gotta <laughs> find the freaking npc that's got the exclamation mark or you know it's just the guard standing there you, when you hover your mouse over him it doesn't pop up a little exclamation point it stays the 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 glove cursor you know the gauntlet cursor or no it pops to the bubble the chat bubble yeah uh the white chat bubble with the yellow arrow you gotta go right click on him and then, 
I already knew that this was a thing, but I didn't like insta go in my settings and change it. But it it was scrolling. Yep. Text, you know, <laughs> you get Six on. hours like, later. Like, like like instantly pulled up escape in my settings menu and turned on. You can't turn on the the setting where it's instant, instant quest instant text. Quest yeah. text. And I was like, oh, I just saved so many quality saved of life. Seventy hours of this level sixty right here. You know, <laughs> of, of right. not waiting on quest text to scroll. I th I think so. like obviously so many quality of life changes have been made over time, but I think a lot of those quality of life changes have made the game so different now than what it originally was that made it so good that it's just a completely different game now. Because yeah. when when it was originally made, it was made like it was like wow, it was like second life. Like uh, you go home and you kill a couple boars and that's all you do. You know what I mean? But now it's but like you, you stayed on in. it, but you stayed on it from from the time you got home until the time yeah, like but, you needed to shower. Like the way they've made it now is like you can log in, do like a couple dailies, and you just you just get off. You know what I mean? Like it's just like a quick fix kind of thing now, because so many games now are like quick fixes. You know, you just get yeah, it for five minutes, ten minutes, whatever, and it, so time oriented. It's different. I don't know. It'd be interesting to get back into that. Uh, I'm looking forward to a few different things. One is next Friday. On the 19th is Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, because big Marvel fan here. Uh, I think it'll be like a lot of fun. I don't know how good it'll be, but I love I like Marvel games. And it's good to have some good old-fashioned co-op, beat em up, smash em up, you know, slice and dice. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see. And I've been playing a lot of uh, Crash Team Racing, Nitro Refuel. Let's go. Uh, I can Alex hates it. Uh I wish, we, I wish I would play it more. But. I actually uh, hated it at first because I played it back in the day when it was first out. And it when I replayed it, I was so confused. And uh, it took because you're used to Mario Kart, right? Like, it's so different. Um, but now I beat, the, I beat the I beat the I beat the campaign and everything. I've I've raced, done some online races, and placed you know top three multiple times. I haven't won a race. I had one race. I was in first the whole time. And then the second half of the last lap, I got passed by like three people, but, uh, I'm getting there and I can hold my own at least, but, uh, it's a lot of fun because it's just like, it gets to the point where you're just like, you just drift the entire like course. And it's so satisfying when you just keep a boost going for like the whole lap. But, um, uh, yeah. Is there anything, Caleb? I mean, I don't know. I know you're playing WoW and stuff, but we're any well, movies or anything? Um... Well, I mean, we we could touch on Dauntless. Or I could at least touch on oh. Dauntless. Um, yeah. Epic Games is smash up uh, game. Well, they're Monster Hunter version of Monster Hunter. It's called Dauntless. Uh, you grab a party of four, and you're wearing armor, um, different styles of weapons. I'll get into it, but uh, grab a party of four, got your armor and your boys with you, and you go out and you smack up. A monster. Uh, they're called what again, Alex? Behemoths. Behemoths. They're they're different, and then there's different categories of behemoths. They all have like a like a like a toughness like a toughness level, and then they all have a certain type of uh, element. They've got an elemental thing to them. Like there's frost behemoths, there's fire behemoths, there's terror behemoths, there's uh, uh shock. Help me, Alex. There's shock behemoths. You have et the cetera. radiant and umber. Radiant and Umber. Oh, um, big angry boys. Yeah. Um, uh, weapon styles. You can you can wield an axe. You can wield, or it's either of. You can either wield an axe, a hammer, a sword, pistols, or two um, chain blades, more or less. They're parasides. The God of War. Par parasides. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Each each different weapon um has sort of uh an activated ability sort of uh some kind of mechanic like the chain blades uh can grapple you to an enemy or to the behemoth uh and deal damage to it you can also like kick off of you can activate again and actually push yourself back and vault kind of away from the behemoth uh oh and the pole arm pole arm forgot about the pole arm yeah the uh, pike the pike yeah uh, the pike shoots a projectile, right? For it's activated. Yes. Um, the warhammer, you can wind yourself up kind of like Thor and then throw yourself at a location and do damage and kind of like throw the hammer into it. Um, 
Or no, sorry, it throws the axe forward and then you teleport to it, right? Yes. Yeah, so like just different abilities, different cool stuff. Uh, they've got um, armor that increases your resistance to shocky behemoths, to fiery behemoths, and weapons that do more damage to shocky behemoths. Uh, so that's, you know, the simplified kind of bit to it, but it's co-op made by Epic Games, so it's kind of, it's, 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 it's got a Fortnite feel and theme to it uh like the art style is yeah 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 the look the look is 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 fortnite but then it is it is monster hunter uh essentially um matchmaking uh sort of bit but you go kill an npc which is kind of cool like i mean we got enough multiplayer you know like pvp let's i like the whole like everybody collab or everybody get together and go smack up on some big big hp you know and then different behemoths do different mechanics as far as uh, their power levels and, and whatnot, and then their own elemental abilities and stuff. Um, you, of course, uh, have an in-game currency. You have um, loot that you end up, like, looting from behemoths, more or less behemoth uh, carcasses, and, and you, you uh, use that to upgrade weapons and armor to, and to level up to, you know, make... The whole process easier and stuff but dauntless um epic games is a pretty good little bit I'm, I'm waiting uh my sub my sub ran out this week for warcraft even though i was kind of deep or i am deep in able to but uh took a break for the week and that's also like i feel like it was good for the whole uh, uh dice tower bit so yeah been playing, some Dauntless, yeah. been playing some dauntless and then taking a break from wow and and getting crafty over here uh waiting and uh yeah but it's back to the ground tomorrow <laughs> it's warcraft so all righty uh, i think with that i think we'll wrap it up for this first podcast here guys uh we will be doing some more subclass series videos for D D fifth edition here uh coming up soon got some other stuff going in the uh kicker as well so uh if you guys enjoyed everything or have anything you'd like to hear from us please let us know um if you're on youtube hit the like subscribe button it helps a ton uh if you're watching on some kind of podcast thing for whatever follow or whatever way you have of checking us out and keeping on tabs on us podcast yes regardless of what platform you're on uh all the likes subscribes views listens are all appreciated and as always guys thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching thanks for watching and for listening, listening? Yeah, what? it's listening this time. <laughs> dun, dun, dun.